Okay, we're now going to learn how to solve more complicated inequalities, namely ones with polynomials or rational expressions. And because of this, it's much harder. I'm going to teach you a technique that I call sign charts. I've never seen anyone do this the same way I do, but my method may take a little longer. Theirs tends to require you to do a whole lot more work. So, I recommend that while you watch this video, you don't take any notes the first time. You have to be watching while I do the sign chart or you get very confused. Now, the first thing to be able to do a sign chart is you have to have a zero on one side. So this one already nicely has a zero on one side. The next step is to factor everything. So I start by pulling out an x. Then I see that I can factor this as x plus 1, x minus 1. So I have a zero on one side and everything else factored. Now, here's where the sign chart comes into being. Every single factor is going to get a horizontal line. So I get a line for x, a line for x plus 1, and a line for x minus 1. And then I get a line that I'm going to call total. Now, these are number lines, which means that smaller numbers go on the left, bigger numbers go on the right. Keep that in mind. The next step is to put a vertical line for everywhere that one of the factors equals 0. So, when does x equal 0? Well, at x equals 0, it feels a little bit like a trick question. So I'm going to put a vertical line that goes through all the horizontal lines and label it x equals 0. And then I'm going to put a 0 here to indicate that this is where this factor equals 0. Now, x plus 1 is 0 at negative 1. So I'm going to have a vertical line for negative 1 and put a zero on this line, indicating that that's where that factor is zero. X minus one is zero at positive one. So I label it one and put a zero on the line where that factor is zero. If you happen to have these in the wrong numerical order, there's no way to fix it without starting from scratch. So be very careful about that. Now, with two exceptions, which we aren't going to come to until we see sign charts at a later date, Every time we have a factor line, the boxes to the left of the zero are always negative and to the right are always positive. It's always negative to the left and positive to the right of wherever I put the zeros on that line. Now, the final line, the total, is composed by multiplying these three. If I multiply three negative numbers, I get a negative number. If I multiply two negative numbers and a positive number, I get a positive number, and so forth. You see that all that you really need to pay attention to is the number of negative numbers to decide if the total is going to be positive or negative. Now, we also want to do something at the vertical lines. In this case, all three things are multiplied. When I multiply zero times anything else, I get zero. So as long as one of the terms is zero, the whole thing will be zero. Now we just have to know how to interpret this for our final answer. I go back to my equation, and I need this total to be greater than, but not equal to, zero. So greater than zero is where it's positive. I don't want where it's equal to zero, so I don't want to include the zero points. I just want these two boxes. Now this one is in between the numbers negative one and zero, without including either one. So I want x to be between, but not equal to, negative 1 and 0. By reading these left to right, there are always going to be less thans in between them. Whether or not they're less than or equal to is whether or not I actually can include the 0. My second region of solutions is this last box, which is from 1 on for forever, or in other words, everything bigger than 1. And this gives me my final answer for this inequality. Now, I come to this inequality. It looks a little bit different because there's no zero on one side, and I have to fix that. Okay. Now, you have to be very careful here. If this were an equal to sign, I would simply multiply both sides by x minus 3 and get rid of the fractions. But I can't do that here. This is where my eighth warning comes in, that I can never multiply or divide an inequality, both sides through, by anything that has an x in it. And here's why. When you multiply an inequality by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality. 
If I were to multiply the inequality by x minus 3, I don't know if it's a positive or negative number. So I don't know if I have to flip the inequality or not, which means I simply have to avoid it. So the only way to around this is to subtract the x over so that I can get a 0 on one side. Now, in order to deal with this, I have to add the fractions. So I'm going to multiply this term by x minus 3 over x minus 3 so that I can properly add the fractions. Just like last time we added fractions, I now have to multiply off the top so I can rewrite it. So I end up with 4 minus x squared plus 3x on top. Now the next step would be to try to factor this, but we've run into a little bit of a problem. The x squared is negative, and we don't like a negative x squared. And in fact, it will cause problems with the sign chart. So before I try to factor this numerator, I'm going to guarantee that that x squared is positive by moving everything over to the other side. So when I move things over to the other side, it flips all of the signs just in the numerator okay. so that I get that positive x squared. Now when I try to factor this, x squared minus 3x minus 4, I end up with x minus 4, x plus 1 on top, and x minus 3 on bottom. Okay. Now I'm going to do my sign chart. Just like I did with the last one, I get a horizontal line for every factor. and then one for the total. I'm going to get a vertical line where every factor equals zero. So x minus 4 is zero at 4. x plus 1 is zero at negative 1. And x minus 3 is zero at 3. Taking note to put them in the correct numerical order. Then everything is negative to the left and positive to the right of their individual zeros. And lastly, I have to do the total. Now, this one, they're not all multiplied. The x minus 3 is actually a division. But with pluses and minuses, that doesn't matter. Three negatives makes a negative. Two negatives makes a positive. One negative makes a negative. And all positives makes a positive. Now, the zeros, I do have to be careful about the fact that it was a fraction. This zero is in the numerator, and a zero in the numerator of the fraction makes the whole thing zero. This zero is also in the numerator. Zero in the numerator makes the fraction zero. This zero is in the denominator, and that makes the fraction undefined. I mark that with a u. Now I have to interpret my answer. I want places where it's less than or equal to zero, so I want these two boxes. I'm allowed to include the zero points, but of course I can't include the undefined points. So this one is everything less than or equal to negative one. This one is everything between three and four. I can include the four, but not the three, because I'm allowed to include where it equals zero, but not where it is undefined.